Hi, today I'd like to explain to you why you should move towards thinking about your instruments as being secondary to you. I mean, all your instruments should only confirm what you already know. So um, let's dive in, let's take it one at a time. Let's Let's talk about our almighty compass. Of course, we need a compass for diving. We need to know what way is home, right? So we use a compass in different ways. We can use a compass if we dive from shore. That way we can just point our compass, the way I do it, away from shore. And I look at the numbers and I say, okay, let's for example see, all right, the heading out is 120 degrees. 180 the other way means it's 300 degrees back home. I can put my compass and that way I always have that set. Now, everyone alive, almost everyone alive, can turn themselves around 180 degrees without a compass, right? It's not that hard to go from here to there. That's roughly 180 degrees. Now, when we think about instruments underwater as a scuba diver, we have to find a balance between what is practical and what is precise. And how much precision do we need to be practical? So give the compass. They're very crude compasses. If you take a compass on a sailboat, for example, it's much more um, detailed uh, with regards to the degrees that's there and it's much more um, uh, yeah, trustworthy, I would almost say, but it's much more easy to read down to a smaller number. And that's because in sailing, there is more dependence. You travel a longer distance. So any deviation of your course, the longer you have a small deviation, the bigger, you know, the error is. We're not going to swim that long for us to have that big of an impact. Um, so when we look at a compass, it should only confirm what you already know. So instead of focusing 100% on your compass, try to think more about it as a guideline to get you in the right direction. You know your core is out, you know your core is home. Happy days. Underwater, you can use that and say, okay, this is 120 degrees, what can I see? Ah, there is, you know, ripples in the sand, they're parallel to the shore, there's rocks, there's whatever vegetation. I can see some weird plants sticking out of the bottom there. That's on my on my course, I'll swim over there. And then I can just look around, keep an eye on that plant. I can zigzag towards that plant if I want. And then when I am at the plant, I can take another course and keep on going. That way you actually see and enjoy the dive. If you're focusing on your compass, like we see many beginning divers do, focusing on the compass and you know every slight deviation to try to correct it, they don't see anything. They don't see their buddy, they don't see the dive and they you know, end up usually getting lost, paradoxical as it might sound, um, using the compass too much. Keep the compass on a shore dive, heading out, heading in, and that way you always know where the coast is, where home is. And then you only have to figure out where on the coast you are. And that starts at the beginning of the dive before you get into water. Have a look at the dive site. What does the coastline look like? Uh, is it all sand, for example, or do you have like a pier or a jetty or a tree or, you know, some weeds in one area, some rocks in one area, then you can have something to guide for. And then always, if you want to set out at a specific heading to a specific site, do it wrong on purpose. And by that, I mean, um, if you want to go out for, I don't know, there is a wreck that's on a ledge. I remember a dive in Malta where we used to guide people to. It was, I think if I can remember correctly, it's 10 years ago, 110 degrees out from the entry point of the dive site, and then you'd get to this wreck, and the wreck would be just on a little slope. But if you were off just by a little bit, when you were heading straight towards 110, then it's very difficult to get to guess if you're on the left side wrong or on the right side wrong. Right? 
So what I used to do, I would just go, okay, instead of 110, I go 120. Then when I hit the ledge, I know it's on the ledge, I just swim to the left because I know I'm wrong on the right side. So anyway, that's just something to think about. Think about your compass as something that confirms your feeling. And then, of course, when you get completely turned around, you can say to your buddy, hey, is it this way? And the buddy goes, yes, it's that way. And that's always a good idea, it, both you and your body, even though one of you may, may take it upon himself or upon herself to guide the dive, both of them, both of you should have your compasses set at the beginning and know the courses are heading out. So sure, heading from away from the coast, home, back to the coast. If you do a wreck dive, I'd always, as soon as you come on the wreck from the downline, uh, Take a note of your compass, what the direction of the wreck. So the bow is in, the, for example, north, and then the, you know, the stern is in the south, or whatever it may be. That way you'd have an, an idea of um, when you lose track of the wreck or something like that. So Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or you know, even better, share this with your buddies if they don't know about our channel yet. So um, I hope to see you out there, and uh, you know, stay sharp, guys. See ya. I mean, it's very. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the coffee machine turning off. Bear with me for a second. Every time you hear that sound, you feel like a cup of coffee. You know what I mean? They should make a, an alarm or something. They say beep five minutes before it turns off. Anyway, I digress.